few times a year I like to put out some crab stroke lobster pots from the shore as, as well as from the kayak. It's a bit of fun and sometimes you're lucky and get a free meal and sometimes not. I choose times when the sea conditions are relatively calm so no worries of losing the pots to the sea. I use the same collapsible pots I use from the kayak as they're fairly easy to carry along the coast path and down onto the rocks. Plus they will catch crabs and lobsters of a decent size. I baited the pot with fish trimmings, in this case from my local fishmonger, and secured to the bottom of the centre of the pot. Many of you may already know that spider crab in Cornwall has been rebranded as Cornish King Crab. The reason being, Cornish King Crab sounds more appealing than spider crab to would-be diners. This is a great idea and I'm all for anything that helps the local fishermen sell their catch to the local UK market and spider crab are abundant in our waters. So I say good luck to them and hope the rebranding helps the local UK market because spider crab is great to eat. This is the first time this year that I'm putting a pot out and should at least get a spider crab and just a case of being big enough to take. On this occasion I'm going to secure the rope to the rocks with a three kilo anchor but often use boulders if available at the mark. OK, ready to shoot the pot and I'm dropping it around low water into a gully. The pot weighs about six pound and should stay put under its own weight in calm seas or if it does move, will not move far. I'm putting the anchor into a weedy rock pool and no floats used. It's at the low water mark and the rope will get completely covered by the rising tide and will not be a hazard as no boats can, can get into this area due to the rocks. So basically, apart from at low water, the rope stays completely hidden. Now just a case of leave and hope to get something. Now for the exciting bit, back down to pull the pot. And I always get a great feeling of anticipation when I pull the pot. Um, that excitement of why, what might be in it. Now, it would have been out 24 hours. Now, ideally, particularly for lobster, it would be better if you could leave it out a bit longer, two or three days, but you've got to get the weather for that and my availability, so I'm only able to leave it out for 24 hours. But I'm pretty confident there should be at least spider crab in there, and it is just going to be a case of whether the spider crab, crab are big enough to take. But, but, you, but you never know, that's, that's the fun of doing the, these sort of things. You just never know what might be in there. All right, so I've got to get myself down. I'm a bit, a bit early, about hour and a half before low water, but it's a much bigger tide today, and I've deliberately planned this to that when I come back again, the tide, the tide is bigger. So it makes me make it easier for me to, to get and access, access the rope. Right, good. Now, even though I'm here a lot earlier, because it's a bigger tide today, um, I can get, I can get to, the, to the anchor in this rock pool here, which is good. Right now I've just got to hope that the pot's not snagged. Um, I can see it actually and it, and it looks okay. It's not, it's clear. I've had them before where they've, they have moved a little bit if, you've, if I've put them too close to the ledge and they, they, they just get, get better, a bit caught on the ledge. But this one, this one looks clear. So fingers crossed, see what we've got. Yep, coming up, no problem. Oh, 
Oh, fantastic. And the reason that I say fantastic is because there's two males in there. Now, I particularly wanted, if I could, to catch the males. The, re the reason is because the males have got the big claws, the big front, front claws, and therefore there's a lot more, more meat in them. And uh, one of them, one of them definitely looks big enough, and hopefully the other one will big enough, be big enough as well. I believe I'm right in saying the bylaws is we're, we're allowed to, recreational, we're allowed to take five that meet the size limit. But it's always better if you can get the males. What I do with the females, I mean, I will take a female if it's, if it's, a, if it's, a, de if it's a decent size. But sometimes when you, when you pull the females, um, they can be full of, full of eggs. They can be carrying eggs. And then, of course, you get that. Uh, it's best, best to put them back. But um, it's always great to get, get the male. Yeah, that, that's, that's a nice one there. So there you go. Spider crab. Otherwise known now in Cornwall as Cornish King Crab. Right, I'll get these, get myself organised, get them out the the pot and uh, just to make sure I'll measure them I'm just getting myself organized you always got to be a, always like to take my time when I'm on the rocks here I've got uh, I've got studs on my boots there my wading boat boots but even so particularly if you're carrying carrying stuff it's, it's when you step on the you step on the weed um, even with studs step on the weed and you can soon you can soon go and at my age now having known from past experience it is no joke falling in other words you find you don't bounce anymore right used to run across the, these rocks when I was a lot younger and now, blimey, I'm so so uh, cautious and uh, conscious of falling. Right, let's get these out of the pot, which can be a bit tricky at times because they, they cling to the netting. And what I forgot to bring with me was gloves. Oh good, that one's come out, that one's come out that one's come out okay. One. And that one's come out okay. Two. Now to measure. Yep, more than big enough. So the smaller one is more than big enough. Basically, it's from the base, base for those of you that don't know, the base of those thorns there to the, to the back of the shell there. And we're talking 130, 13 centimetres. And that one is, yeah, that's over, that is over 14. So that's great. But just out of curiosity, we'll measure the big, the big, much bigger one. Yeah, that's, that's about 17 centimetres, 170. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, and just get out of this breeze, I'm going to dispatch them straight away. Now to dispatch. And I've shown this before in, a, in another spider crab video. Um, but again, for those of you that don't want to see this, I would advise you either you fast forward or you or you stop stop the video. But it's got to be done one way or another. Um, and to me, I, I just feel better if I uh, do this rather than dropping dropping them into boiling water. But okay, so we got this flap here, that flap there which on the female is round, where she carries her eggs. Now, if I pull that flat back, there's a hole at the base of a, base of a, of a crater. 
you get a screwdriver, you put put the screwdriver down in that hole firm till you feel the feel the shell, the, the top shell, and then give give it a good wiggle, and then immediately turn it up th that way round for it to drain. So pull the flap back and there, there's the hole at the crater, there, so we're going to go down firm and, and give it a good wiggle and you can see and then turn it over and let it drain. Now obviously, obviously there might be still some movement, but you can see that's gone, that's gone limp now. I've got my crab boiling pot now rapidly boiling with salted water and it's in with the crab. We'll go with the big one first. Um, the, cra the pot the pot's not really big enough for both crabs, to boil both crabs at the same time, so we'll boil them one at a time. Uh, leave that to boil for about 15-20 about minutes. But what I've decided to do with the, the other crab, and this is an experiment because I've not tried it before, is I'm going to take the, take the claws off, break the claws off, like that, break the claws off, and I'm going to smoke them. Now I, I can't remember if, if I've had smoked crab claws before. I may have done, I'm not sure, but I just thought it would be a good experiment to, to smoke a couple of, the, couple of the claws for the future. I may really like it and do it again. But the rest of it, once this one's done, the rest of it's gonna go into, into the boiling pot. Both crabs have cooked now and I've got them on the drainer here to cool down. But I'll give a little tip that I gave in the last spider crab catch and cook video, but it's worth mentioning again now. If you notice, I've got both crabs propped up. But what I've done with a knife, I've pierced a hole at the head end by the eyes, pierced a hole into the crab, prop them up like that and the reason for that is to get them to drain the fluids out particularly any water that might have got in there into the crab during the boiling process so that when you extract the meat the white meat and the brown meat from the body it's not all full of full of water all right so once they're cooled down you've got to prepare them by removing all the claws now we remove the claws and like to serve the claws as they are and then at the table crack them open just find just find that a, a bit of fun but i'm going to extract the meat from the body the white meat and the brown meat now despite what you hear sometimes about spider crab that the all the meats in the claws there's no meat in the body that in fact is not true providing you're prepared to spend the time to extract the lovely white meat with a with a with a crab pick but as long as the crab's big enough and particularly these these male crabs i can promise you there's absolutely loads of lovely white meat that you can get out. Now, I've already done a very detailed video of how to do that, how to prepare the crab. And I don't really want to repeat myself now, do it all again this time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show snippets of that video with a voiceover to explain what I'm, what I'm doing. But for those of you do, that do want to watch that in full from the last video, I'll put a link to it down in the description with a timeline that should take you straight to the to the start of where I prepare the crab and extract uh, extract the meat. Now, as mentioned, the, with the claws of this one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to smoke those in the shed tomorrow, and that's going to be really interesting to to taste, uh, see what smoked spider crab claws taste like. All right, so I'll show you that snippets from that previous video of how you prepare and extract the meat from from the spider crab. First thing to do is remove the claws with a twist and a pull. Then if the claws have barnacles, scrape the barnacles off with a knife. 
This helps to prevent grit getting into the meat when you crack the claws open. Next, pull off the shell. Remove the grey crab's gills, otherwise called lungs, or devil's fingers, as these are not edible. Using a spoon, scoop out the brown meat from the body and the shell. My favourite way of eating the brown meat is on toast. Next, break or cut the white body shell in half to get access to the cavities that hold the white meat. And then with a crab pick and a lot of patience, pick the meat out. To make it easier to get at all of the meat, break the shell up into smaller pieces. Keep picking away and eventually a lot of lovely white meat can be picked out. The alternative is to serve the crab whole and do all this at the table. This is how I first had spider crab in a Cornish restaurant and although it took me ages to eat, what fun it was. At home we prefer to extract the brown meat and the white meat and serve with the whole crab claws. I've picked the meat out of both of the both of the crabs the same way as I've, I've just shown you and I'll show you that later but now I'm going to smoke these crab claws and I'm really looking forward to to seeing what these taste like could be great or it, they could be a bit of a disaster but we'll see well I've had these smoking for about I think it's about 15 to 20 minutes so and the burners burnt out I mean that's what I normally do with things like smoke mackerel mackerel fillets fill a burner up and then let it run its time which is usually 15 to 20 minutes and that's usually enough but having never done crab claws before I don't know but let's have a look Well, they certainly look done. I'm going to be interested. I hope I haven't uh, opened it. Hope I haven't over overcooked them. But we'll see. Once I crack them open, we'll soon find out um, if they're burnt or not. But uh, yeah, interesting. So this is the end result. So I've got the the legs and the claws of the larger crab. And if you notice there, there's a lot of white meat being pulled out on the, on the end of the legs and the claws. And what happens when you twist and pull, often you'll actually pull out a lot of white meat that, that, that is in the body of the crab, the cavity of the crab, which is great. Then I've got the, the legs and the smoke claws of the other crab. I've managed to pick out a good amount of white meat from both crabs. And also got the, the brown meat from both crabs. So quite a, there's a lot of meat there to enjoy. And what we intend to do is have some of, the, some of this tonight as a first course and the rest tomorrow as a first course. And what I'm going to do is make, make some sort of dipping sauce. Not sure what yet, maybe a mustard sauce or a, a green sauce or something that, go, that goes well with crab. But what I can't resist at the moment, and I'm going to share it with you, is to have a taster of a bit of the smoked crab claw. So I'll crack one of those open and we'll see what it looks like and more importantly, what it tastes like. Well, the meat certainly looks okay. Okay, here goes. So 
surprisingly, even though the outside of the shell looks really dark and brown, and, and I was I was uh, uh, concerned that oh dear, I've burnt it. There's un there's actually only a very very mild smoky flavour. I mean, that may be different if you use a different uh, smoking dust. I don't know. Um, the smoking dust that I use, Beach, um, is supposed to be recommended for for fish. Hmm. It's nice. I'll def definitely do them again, and I'll experiment with smoking times. This is the first attempt. For the first attempt, it's good. But yeah, so just a mild smoking fla smoky flavour rather than being overpowered with a smoking flavour. But if any of you have done this before or tried these before, let me know what you think. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased and it's definitely worth doing again. Just just something different, isn't, isn't it? Okay, so once again, I hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching.